In this video, we're going to consider how fast a 4A series converges to its target. <coughs> so it, we're talking about periodic 4A series, so a, func a periodic function with period L. And we know that we can write it as a sum of complex exponentials. If you prefer, you can use cosines and sines of 2 pi nx over L. I prefer to write it as a complex exponential. And we know how to get the coefficients. You'd get them by integrating 1 over L times f of x times the, the exponential of minus 2 pi i and x over L. And the big question is, if you want to approximate a, sum, a function, how many terms do you need? Is it good enough to just use five terms? Do you need 10, 100, 1,000? Another way to put that is how fast do the coefficients shrink? If they shrink really fast, you only need the first few. If they shrink slowly, you're going to need a lot of them. So the basic rule is that the smoother the function is, the faster the Fourier coefficients decay. In particular, if you have a jump in the kth derivative, if the worst thing that happens to f is that its kth derivative jumps, then typically the Fourier coefficients go as 1 over n to the k plus 1. If it's infinitely differentiable, there are no jumps at all, you can take derivatives as, as, as long as you like, then it decays faster than the, any power of n. No matter how big p is, n to the p times the f hat of n goes to zero. And if it's analytic, meaning that it can be expressed as a convergent power series, then these not only decay faster than any power, they decay exponentially fast. Okay, so let's see why this, why this might be. The key observation is how derivatives work. You see, if a function is given as a 4a series, then you take a derivative, you just take the derivative of each term. The derivative of this exponential is the exponential times what's inside. In other words, the nth Fourier coefficient of the derivative of f is just 2 pi i n over L times the nth Fourier coefficient of f. And you can continue the process. The nth Fourier coefficient of the kth derivative, you just pick up k factors of 2 pi i n over L. Now the second big observation has to do with inner products. We saw in a previous video that the inner product of f with itself was 1 over L times the sum of f hat n squared. Now, if the kth derivative exists and is square integrable, then the, sorry, not 1 over L, L. Then the, uh, then 1 over L times the inner product of the kth derivative with itself is going to be the sum of the Fourier coefficients of the kth derivative, and those squared. And that's going to be 2 pi over L to the 2k times the sum of n to the 2k f hat of n squared. In other words, this sum converges. If you've got k derivatives, then this sum has to converge. And if this sum converges, then the coefficients f hat n have to decay faster than 1 over n to the k. And then typically, uh, if you're on the borderline, they'll decay as 1 over n to the k plus 1. So let's take a look at some examples of this. In our first example, we look at a step function. So the function whose value is, we'll take l equals 1, and the function that's 1 up to a half, and then is minus 1 from a half to 1. And then it repeats. It's 1 from 1 to 1 and a half, and it's minus 1 from 1 and a half to 2. And then it's 1 from 2 to 2 and a half, minus 1 from 2 and a half to 3, and so on. Now, this function obviously is discontinuous. It jumps up at the integers and jumps down at the half integers. So since the zeroth derivative has jumps, you expect the 4a coefficients to go as 1 over n. And if you do the actual calculation, the nth 4a coefficient is the integral of from 0 to a half of f of x, that's 1, 
times this complex exponential, plus the integral from 1 half to 1 of f of x, that's minus 1, times the complex exponential. And it works out to minus 2i over n pi for n odd and 0 for n even. And you see that this decays like 1 over n. What that means is that the hundredth term is only a factor of 100 smaller than the first term. If you want to get 99% accuracy, you better take at least 100 terms, because that hundredth term is going to give you a 1% correction. So doing Fourier series with this kind of function is not all that effective, because it just takes way too many terms to get anything useful. Now, next example is we consider the tenth function. It goes x, 1 over 1 minus x. And then it repeats. It goes up and down and up and down and up and down. In fact, the derivative of this function is this function. Well, this has a discontinuous first derivative. So you should expect the coefficients to go as 1 over n squared. And in fact, they do. The coefficients are 1 quarter for n equals 0, minus 1 over n pi for n odd, and 0 for n even. Okay. Now, the hundredth term is, you know, sorry, the tenth term is 100 times smaller than the, uh, than the leading term. You only need roughly 10 terms to get 90% accuracy, 99% accuracy much more efficient. It's much easier to take 100 terms, uh, 10 terms than 100. Our last example is we'll look at something that at first glance looks pretty smooth. We'll take a parabola between 0 and 1, and then we'll take a different parabola between 1 and 2. So this is going to be periodic with period 2 rather than with period 1. But the second derivative is discontinuous. The second derivative of this function is negative 1. It's always curving down. Sorry, negative 2. It's always curving down between 0 and 1. And then it's plus 2. It's always curving up between 1 and 2. The second derivative is discontinuous. So you should expect the coefficients to go as 1 over n cubed. And to get 99% accuracy, you probably only need about five terms. Bottom line, the smoother the function is, the better Fourier series works. If, you ha if you're starting off with a very smooth function, then you only need a handful of terms to get a very, very good approximation to it. If you start with a rough function, it, Fourier series doesn't work nearly as well.